For 15 years, Riquet had faced every conceivable obstacle, natural and man-made, to build his beloved canal. But now at 76, he was exhausted. On October the 1st of 1680, Riquet, gravely ill, called his son to his bedside and asked, Où est le canal? Where is the canal? His son responded that it was only about three miles away from the sea. Riquet passed away. The canal was opened eight months later, eight months too late for his creator to see it. On May 15th, 1681, the Canal du Midi opened for business. Canal du Midi is a masterpiece. The solution for um, transport by water in France is the best solution still today. And uh, the Canal du Midi shows the way. The Canal du Midi was only one of dozens of projects Louis XIV built in his lust for power and glory. But by the end of his reign, his profligate spending brought France to the brink of ruin. His autocratic rule and huge debts would sow the seeds of revolt a century later. In 1789, the monarchy was deposed by the French Revolution. King Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette had their heads cut off in the Place du Roi. But the reign of terror would turn in on itself, and Danton and Robespierre and the other fathers of the French Revolution would either be murdered in their bathtub or die by the guillotine themselves. And out of this chaos would come a young, brilliant general from Corsica who would lead France into a new era of empire. 1795, a young officer from a small Mediterranean island is about to make his first bid to seize power. Paris is reeling from three years of bloody turmoil in the wake of the French Revolution. His reign would capture the imagination of the French people and launch him onto the world stage as one of the greatest conquerors in history. His name is Napoleon Bonaparte. Napoleon was a force of nature. Audacity was his middle name. Napoleon imposed himself upon Europe with such force that he goes down in the annals with Caesar and few others. Napoleon's rise was lightning fast. From the head of the Army of the Interior to Commander-in-Chief of the forces in Italy in just one year. In 1796, Austria attacked French troops in Italy, and Napoleon took a disaffected and undernourished army and turned it into a veritable force. He beat Austria in battle after battle, eating up most of northern Italy, finally even bringing that serene Republic of Venice to its knees. When Napoleon returned to Paris, he was a star, and then he started to take over. But believe me, after 10 years of the blood and guts of the French Revolution, the people of Paris and France were ready to say, praise the Lord. In 1804, Napoleon was crowned emperor at Notre Dame. It is said there's a preparatory drawing of Jacques-Louis David of the event when Napoleon's taking the crown from the pope and crowning himself. He also turned to his brother and said, if daddy could only see us now. Now, with his astounding ego, it's interesting that Napoleon was averse to creating monuments to himself, but he created one, 70,000 tons of stone in the shape of an arch, modeled on the Arch of Titus in the form of Rome. It would be called the Arc de Triomphe. In 1809, Napoleon chose architect Francois Chalgrin's design for his triumphal arch. For a site, Napoleon decided on the end of the Avenue de Champs-Élysées in the Place de l'Étoile. The structure would consist of a simple arch with a vaulted passageway, 98 feet high and 49 feet wide. 
in all 164 feet high and 148 feet wide. The arch would be twice as big as its inspiration in Rome. At the base of the arch's pillars are four huge relief sculptures commemorating the Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars. The view of that grand arch, standing majestically like a crown atop the most celebrated street in Paris, had power and glory written all over it. Napoleon was a self-made man, and that's in many ways what much of the revolution stood for, was that kind of brash individualism which took people's breath away. By 1812, Napoleon had conquered most of Europe, but then the boy bit off more than he could chew, he invaded Russia. The rest, as we say, is history. Poor supply trains, harsh winters, the resiliency of the Russian people, Napoleon was defeated, forced to abdicate, and exiled to the island of Elba. But he escaped and enjoyed a short reprise to power we call the 100 days before he was defeated at Waterloo and exiled again, this time to St. Helena, and for good. Perhaps in respect and awe that the French felt for Napoleon, they continued the work on the Arc de Triomphe until it was finished in 1836. And the Arc de Triomphe would stand as the emblem of France until a wiry, bizarre skeleton of a building made out of iron would change the idea of an urban skyline forever. The Arc de Triomphe would tower over Paris for another 50 years before succumbing to a spire that would seize the imagination of the world. In 1889, Paris would build itself one of the most memorable and daring monuments on Earth, the Eiffel Tower. Napoleon was not short. At five feet, six and a half inches, he was even slightly taller than the average Frenchman of the 19th century. 